Oh my God, Disney fans are going they're to They're going to rip us apart. They're going to kill We're us. We're canceled. You just got to cut this out. No, no. Let's just take our canceling and shame. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. Little magician move there. Nothing yeah, up the nothing sleeves. Nothing up the sleeves, guys. I am an honest man. I am Harriet Olson. Harriet Olson, the Olson twin that nobody cares about. No, I'm from Walnut Grove. Why not? Be wherever you be from wherever you want to be from. And this here is Frank. Um, he's little, also he's also from Walnut Grove today. He's looking like he's a little Bo Peep today. He's Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. Whatever it is, today is a green day. We're wearing our green Croak and Crow shirts. Will we sell merch one day? No. We'll give it away for free. We'll give it away for free. A first long, one's free. <laughs> first one's free, then you'll get hooked. Um, Hey, guys. How are you? It's Thursday. Thank Thursday. you. Thursday. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's green day. What? You said it's green day. Oh, yeah. We're both wearing green. It's and not green day like uh, the band. No. But it's... um. It is apple day, and you like green apples. I do. I do like green apples. Against red. I don't even... I wouldn't even say I like red apples. I'll eat a red apple if it's, it's like sliced up into wedges. There's many, many types of apples. That's why we have apple day. Is today apple day? Yes. Uh, and not to be confused with the company the software company no no that's the original the original what the software company was named after which is a yeah. type of apple actually the macintosh apple see there's the types that's an apple right that's yes yeah. mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a very tart um juicy dense red apple okay and i'm going to get a granny smith mm. and you're going to do a blind taste test and i bet you can't tell some would say a mukbang no. Shout out the yesterday's podcast on mukbangs. I have been racking my brain on what type of mukbang I can do, and I have some ideas. I'm gonna do one. A mukbang would have to be that you were. If we did a mukbang of apples, we would have to have the. I'm not used to having the crow. To do a mukbang of apples, we would have to have a whole smorgasbord of apples, and we have we would have to stuff our faces with the apples. You just like taste tests. You like comparisons. You like. Um, reviews, but that taste test doesn't have the same ring to it as mukbang does. Yeah, I'll eat all. I'll eat a ton of apples. Ugh. I don't care. I think I'm you feeling crazy on this get, Thursday. I think you would get sick. So but what? do you think you'll you could do that? You think you could still pick out the Granny Smith? One hundred percent. Really? Okay. One hundred percent. I think you're just basing it on the red apples you've had so far. No, um, I would pick it out easily. I would say, and if I did a blind taste test. Would it be my favorite? There's a lot of apples I haven't had, and, I, and you are correct. I do not like a simple, boring, red, delicious apple, and there might be a Fuji apple that I haven't tried, and I'm like, oh my god, this is Pink delicious. With my, yeah, with my eyes closed. That being said, I think it would come down to, okay, this is my favorite, but number three is a Granny Smith. I think that's how I would... Um, I would end. We'll find out. I wish I'd thought of it already. Yeah, we'll do it uh, as part of our mukbang day. Um, your your sister's name, Avalon, is actually a a, uh, a variant of the word apple. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. And we have a dog named Apple. And we have a dog named Apple. Now, Who's your sister was named after the... The dog. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. The dog was named after the computer. The dog's named after the computer. Computer is named after the fruit. My sister was also named after the fruit. It's an apple. It's a, it's a uh, the family tree. The family <laughs> apple tree. <laughs> she was actually named after um, King Arthur. The island of Avalon mm. is in King Arthur. Everyone's mm. going to know that. But the island of Avalon. Did you say everyone's going to know that? King Arthur? I would almost guarantee nobody would know that the island King Arthur went to was named Avalon. You know, it was surprising. Not everybody knew what mukbang was. Yeah. Hey, well, guess what? That's what we're doing on this podcast. We're letting people know things. Yeah. Um. So, apples, spiritual apple. The apple. Halloween. The um. The uh. The forbidden fruit, which mm -hmm. wasn't actually an apple, but we also also don't know what it was. We also don't even know if it really happened. But, oh well, no. 
No, I'm saying like <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I know, symbolic, I know. like all, all of course, Jesus' parables. Obviously, if you spend time. your life trying to find Noah's Ark, you're yeah. lose, you're missing the point. So if you fen- spend exactly, your life exactly trying to so find the apple, the apple core, the hardcore fact enthusiast, Bible fact enthusiast will say there would have been no apples in the area in which we've come to think creation was started adam and eve it would have been a pomegranate by okay. the translations and okay. all that yeah but we use apple probably good it makes it a little more understandable because that, that once again i don't when i say if it was even real that's not a knock at bible stories are fake it is a homage is that a word mm, make sure <laughs> yeah an homage homage yeah what's my homage mean uh, you're like giving it a tip of the hat to credit. To yeah, it's, it's an homage to the Bible for it not having to be so literal. Mm-hmm. And so you can't, because we don't treat it as stone cold concrete fact, that's what makes it so fluid and then you can adapt it to your life. Yeah. And a simple thing like not being like, well, actually it was a pomegranate. Right. Everyone knows an apple, a juicy, good fruit. I've never had a pomegranate. Never have. Okay. I might be in the minority, but I'm saying I've had an apple. I can see the apple tree. I can see it being picked. Oh, in the I hand, see. So it's so bite. relatable. That's it's relatable, you meant. and, and exactly like the apple tree. So I will just to cover my bases of saying why I said that. I'm, I, I, you can. Who cares what the fruit was? It doesn't matter what the fruit was. All you got to know is it was forbidden. Right. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Do you think that Snow White was biblical because the Wicked Witch had the evil apple that if she chose it, she chose wrong? Mm. Okay, let's keep going with that. So the Wicked Witch would have been the snake. Yeah. Why does she Why does she want Snow White dead? She was the fairest of them all? Or is that Sleeping Beauty? Oh, no. Um, oh my god, why did we start this? Snow White lives in the woods. Yeah. And she's waiting for the prince to kiss her. No. The witch wants her to never wake up again? Yeah. Because she's about... What is going why'd on with she, that story? Why'd she even go to live with the... Dwarves. Huh, dwarves. She went to live with them. Yeah. And then... Right? Or they found she, her asleep. She went to... No, she went... She went to live with them because she was running. They came away. home. They were so sad. They put her in the glass yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. But she was living with them. But why? Yeah. Why did the witch go and find her? Yeah, that had to be. Why are we mixing up Sleeping Beauty and Snow White? Sleeping Beauty was always a captor. Cap- well, Sleeping Beauty is. Was the finger on the. No, that's Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Oh, my God. Disney fans are going They're to They're going to rip us apart. They're going to kill we're us. We're canceled. You just got to cut this out. No, no. We're, we're, let's just take our canceling and shame. All right. Let's let's just let's just let's just assume it would make sense if she was the fairest of them all. I just can't remember. She was quite literally the fairest with with with, with skin like ice or right. snow. That's why she's called Snow White. Right. And hair like a raven. Yes. And and eyes like blue. A, a sky. voice like a bird. She sang. She sang a lot. So I think she. I think I think the, this woman. Did say who's the fairest of them all? Is that from Snow White? And then she said he he said she lives in the woods. And then she she pretended to turn into an old beggar lady. Would yeah. you like to buy my apple? But why does she go to the woods? And why were they? Why was she mad at her? Because she wanted to be with the king. I oh, remember because they she, went in the it, woods with the breadcrumbs, and she was married to her dad. She was married to her dad. And she, they tried to lose the kids in the um. No, that's that's your thinking of Hansel and Gretel. I don't know. All right. Tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, we're going to tell Disney you. Disney Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to tell you, at least for the opening, we'll tell you the exact story of Snow White. I'm going to go. I'm going to watch it tonight. I have Disney Plus. And, and when you watch it, think, is this a biblical? <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, we'll let you know if Snow White can be seen as a biblical story. Uh, Ooh, la, 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 okay. La. Moving on. Moving on of things we know about. Because <laughs> we know about a lot. Uh, There we go. Got nothing to say. You have nothing else? <laughs> I only had Apple Day. Really? And I really All think right. I think it's a UK holiday as a matter of okay, fact. Well, how about this? Uh, last night was a full moon. How it about that? It really was. How about that? It was a full moon. And they say that um, emergency rooms are much more 
packed and unusual in a full moon. So you know what I had to do? I had to go to emergency room. I don't want to hear about that. I wanted to go you check it out. Love emergency. Why don't you become a nurse? <laughs> Never. Yeah. I almost did. I went to nursing school, Frankfurt Hospital School of Nursing. Congratulations. Didn't, um, you love hospitals. Didn't get very far. But yeah, I, it's something about full moon. This was an extra spooky full moon, right? Because this is a spooky season full moon. It the, the sky was was so bright. If even if you I didn't see it. the moon, yeah, you could see the clouds. You could see everything mm. perfectly. Crazy. Mm -hmm. I still want to figure out how the moon affects the waves. I haven't figured that one out yet. If we can't figure out the plot to Snow White, you want to now the gravitational pull. Yeah, magnets and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I want to figure out how all this stuff works. Oh. <sighs> this is We Don't Really Know About It Thursday, isn't it? This is Walkthrough Thursday. Oh, it is. <laughs> you can't just whisper Walkthrough Thursday because we always like... It, part of my editing is I like have it pull onto the screen. We'll cut this whole front end. No. <laughs> no, we have to watch this back in shame <laughs> and learn. You yeah. know what it is? Because you have your crow, my crow That's on your it's, side. It's, it's opposite day, so we don't know what we're doing. He's wearing a bonnet. The animals are wrong. <clears throat> it is walk through Thursday, guys. Yes. Let's roll the intro and try to get back on track. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. I'm coming back in. What's going on, guys? It is walk through Thursday on a Thursday. Last week it was on a Friday because we were goofing. That was opposite day. This week it's on a Thursday. Um, what do we do? What do, what do we do? Why don't you tell them? You do it so much. On I do, Thursdays. You hear me do it so much. On Thursdays we open the Bible. Bible's the open. Bible that that everyone's familiar with and we see all those stories that a lot of people are familiar with and we could just read it regular but instead we choose a small little portion of it and we slowly walk through the portion word by no sentence by sentence word by word nope sentence by sentence line by line word by word letter, letter. consonant by letter, letter by letter vowel <laughs> letter by letter vocal cord vibration by <laughs> vocal cord vibration we, we slow it down guys we're trying to find the deeper meaning this whole pot this should be called the deeper meaning podcast yeah. wednesdays is about one word deeper meaning thursdays one verse deeper meaning friday how deep is your love how deep is your love so yeah so without further ado we're gonna get on and do it Frank is tired of waiting on this Thursday. Well, you told me not to waste paper, so I sent you a text. Oh, I also said no phones. I do I ask for a lot. I know. I know. Just pull out my port of my okay. cellular phone. So, just to let the people know, if they want to follow along, go to Instagram. Instagram. Crook and Crow. At Crook and Crow. You'll see me. And it's the most recent post. It's the most recent post. Oh. It's me chopping wood, baby. Um. All right. This is from Ecclesiastes. Try to spell that one without Try looking at it. Try to say it. it. That's the most, uh, yeah. How many syllables is that? Ecclesiastes. Too many. If the axe it. is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Ecclesiastes. 10-10. Ten, ten. Now this gets me thinking to what I always bring up, so I'm glad we can finally talk about it long form. Is sharpening the axe, baby. Sharpening the axe, I always use that metaphor for working on yourself so that you're strong enough to help others. To not neglect your own self in pursuit to help others because then you're doing less than you can if you could help yourself first. So you, the analogy is, you think of it like sharpening an axe. The axe is your power tool. It's what you're using to chop down all the trees. If you're just worried about chopping trees down, that's a good and that's noble, but it's going to take a lot more strength. It's going to be a lot harder than at first you take a look at yourself, you sharpen that blade, and then you're cutting through trees like butter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll last longer. Yes. Um, you, you can just do more. So taking yeah. the time. So I guess you would cut, cut, sharpen. Because if you don't, you're then well, you're, you you're, might as well yeah, have a spoon. You, you always want a sharp axe, and and you can see it in many different aspects of life. Um, first of first first ofly spiritually, you know, like working on yourself spiritually is very important to then help other people in their spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It's like anything, you know, right. like if if you're, you want to teach someone how to cook, first you know learn how to cook, like, like, like right. And then on top of that, 
Um, there's this big thing that we always talk about in Christianity about Jesus said, give away all your possessions. And we agree, obviously, we agree with everything in the Bible that you should not have um, too much of an emphasis on material wealth and all that. With that being said, uh, I think uh, as people who live in a earthly world, we should not push away all possessions full stop. Mm -hmm. You should not be focusing your life on those possessions. But the more, the better you can do in life, that's great. It means the better you can help someone. Like if, if you have enough money to buy 10 dinners, you can give nine of them away. If you give all, if you give all your money away, you're just another person who's looking for a dinner. Right. You give all the dinners away even. Yeah. So um, there should be no shame. The only people that should feel shame is the Jeffrey Bezoses of the world. See my phone lit up. That's probably Jeffrey. Probably. Stop talking about me is what he's probably. saying. Probably. Be careful. You know, making all this money and donating a sliver of it. Right. That's, I think, like, when we see Jesus talk, not calling it, I don't really, I don't know Jeffrey Bezos. Maybe he, like, secretly is, like, a Batman and is vigilante yeah. tonight. So I'm not going to talk ill on him, but um, there, there's a difference, I think, between, like, ha- having wealth as, like, holding wealth and being like this right. this i'm so powerful because of it or sharpening the axe now you have the sharpest nicest it's an expensive axe you might be you might make money cutting down trees ten dollars a tree and you bought a 200 dollars axe it's like what are you doing well that axe isn't for my wall it's not to look at and right. show everybody how nice my axe is it's to go out there and cut trees down three times as fast right right I would even think when you say that Jesus said to give all your possessions away, we, we've we've thought about this before, and there's lots to think about when you hear it because it's a bit confusing or uh, concerning. But I would I would I'm going to think of some. I was thinking of something when you were talking, um, which was when Jesus said give all your possessions away. I'm wondering if it also could mean not to physically give it away, but to give away the attachment to it, mm. because you hear people who their car is totaled and they're they're like devastated or, yeah. or a, a fire hits their house and these things are devastating but you know what i'm saying like if you didn't if you didn't form an attachment to it yeah. if you weren't defined by it yeah. then you even though it was still in your possession you did give it away like you're, yeah. you're you have it but you don't need it yeah well yeah and i guess that like i think i guess it does go hand in hand because the idea of charity is saying I'm not attached to this money. Right. I, I I don't mind seeing this money help someone else. It's that attachment of the right. I I need this. This right. is my. It's like it's like a baby or something. Right. And then once you start saying things like that, that's when it turns right into something, 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 something. Let's walk through it line by line, shall we? Sure. If the axe is, I think it's all just one sentence. I know. If the axe is dull. So just do that. Just stop there. <laughs> if the axe is dull. Yeah. Okay, well, we already already talked about it. No, well, we have to talk about it longer. (laughs) Um, If the axe is dull. So did you say the axe is us? Yeah, yeah. The axe axe is us. We are the axe. It says, you know, to sneak forward, you know, it does say if the axe is dull and unsharpened. Yeah. But... We can, well, we can stop there because that's, that, that's where the comment. No, but what I'm saying is I find that the word dull mm-hmm. and, the, and the word unsharpened are the same word. So I want to treat them differently because okay. why else are they both there? Yeah. So dull, I feel dull means something different than unsharpened in this aspect. You're really asking me to think. Okay, if the axe is word dull. Word by word. Yeah. All right, well, if the axe is dull, right? That, that you're, I, I, can't, I can't do this. You're making it too nitpicky. I don't know. Try Help me. Help me here. I'm, I'm drowning. I'm dull. <laughs> you're not. Um, right. Maybe dull is 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 without any creativity without any um innovation without any you know dull beyond so there's dull as a person we can't we gotta move on (laughs) we're gonna be covering over this forever there's there's only two more that's fine we can talk about the whole thing after if your axe is dull and edge unsharpened let's just talk about edge unsharpened the edge is is what you're cutting down trees with Mm -hmm. so that's the outward give like the outwardness of you that's the full potential of the axe yes so the so the axe is you but the edge is what you have the to best give. way and then yeah. that's unsharpened it's you're not being you're not using it to its full potential 
more strength is needed. And so this, I think it goes back to what I was saying about this is that a lot of people, you see it with mental health too. Let's just not make this all spiritually, right? Um, well, everything comes back spiritually, but you see it with mental health and then you see uh, people who are hurt and struggling yeah. helping other people. Yeah. And because they don't want to see those people go through that. They recognize. And I think that's where it's the more strength. It's not impossible to cut down a tree with an unsharpened axe. It's not impossible to to be not all not healthy mentally and help someone else mentally mm -hmm. but it's taken a lot more of your strength you have to like and so right a lot of times working harder yeah and it could come to a disaster end because you're wor more worried about them and then that's when boom you get a chip in your axe it's because like you're just whacking whacking the head falls right, off right goodbye you so yeah. it really is harder not smarter yeah but skill will bring success but skill will bring success. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. So if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed. But skill will bring success. Um, is, is it saying that don't worry even if you have a dull axe, being skillful will still let you get the job done? Or is it saying get skillful in sharpening your axe? Then you'll be successful. and You won't be wasting your energy. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. It's saying that anything's possible. Anything's possible. It is possible to live, live life with a dull axe. It, and it's possible to live life with a sharp axe. Yeah. But obviously, maybe it's saying like for the times that you can't sharpen the axe, is all, ho is all hope lost? No. Mm -hmm. you, you'll have, but you'll have to pull from the strength. I think the main point of Ecclesiastes 10.10 is skill. You know, a skilled laborer? Yeah. So a skill. I learned a skill or I perfected a skill. Yeah. It's creating a skill of what you're doing, what your, your output, your, what you're offering to the world. And do it any way you can. Even without a sharp axe? You're saying optimally you should, have, you should sh sharpen your axe, and that's true. But... Well, then, I mean, I guess what you're saying is this is going against my analogy. It's not. You were saying it's more about you than it is about the axe. No, I said skill of keeping your axe sharpened. The skill of keeping your axe sharpened will bring you success. Because you can do it with a dull axe, but you're going to become um, drained. You're going, to, yes. you're going to become overtired. Yes. So everything is possible in life. Everything is possible. Everything is possible in life. With God. Yes. This is saying Ecclesiastes 10.10, skill will bring success. What skill? The skill of keep of keeping your axe sharpened. Yes. Yeah. That is what will bring success. Is, right. Yeah. Is, is the skill of keeping your axe sharpened. And um, couldn't there be various times of your life where, you know, is life just a still photo or is it, a, is it you know, an ongoing video of there's times when you're hitting harder. Yeah. And times when things are just, you have a very sharpest axe and your things are going good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And, and uh, I think a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people, but I think also, yeah, going through this idea of the consistency of sharpening the axe. Right. And, and that's when it and comes. And that would be skilled. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when it comes into this, this daily reminder of you can start feeling burnout and stuff from something. And it's so like, I, I've, if you just go through your life, just trying to help other people and you'll, you'll always have someone else to help. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's great. It's noble. It's good. But there is time. There needs to be time to take for yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, like you're, it's always needs this constant, this uh, regeneration, this restoring of your acts. Right. But yeah. Um, so spiritually, um, to be spiritually skilled. When I hear that, I kind of feel like someone will be snobby. You know, like, you know, like, because skill comes from, I don't have a definition, but skill comes from doing it all the time, right? Yeah, so a talent. A talent. So yeah. so if we were both do, fixing the shingles on the roof, if you if you were very familiar with fixing shingles on the roof and I wasn't, I, yeah. would, I, would, I would admire your skill. I might even be a little jealous of your skill. Mm -hmm. And you weren't born a roofer, but you became skilled yeah. by doing it all the time. So spiritually, um, 
skill spiritual skill will bring spiritual success yeah but when i think of it i think oh like you have to be a pastor or you have to be able to memorize the bible or so is that true no can you be spiritually skilled without being a religious person you know like, yeah um, and and i think that goes back to sharpening of the axe right mm -hmm. um i think more important why i always say yeah, more important is yourself is always is always making yourself the best to be able to spread all of the spiritual goodness is because you might have a preacher dare i say i mean not to call anybody specific out but who using your skill analogy they were a, a quarterback in high school you know like they put in their work at the ministry and now they're going out and teaching football for the rest of their life i think so you're like, oh, can only a, a, a coach be good, good right. at these skills? But this person who's outside with their kid every single day working on, on their – and never had the accolades that you're saying. But right. what's what's more important, playing every day? What's more, more – uh, let's see, do a different uh, thing that you would do every day because what, what grown man's practicing football every day? Um, every day? How about painting? Okay. How about, okay, painting. Sure. So, oh, do I need to be a – uh, art teacher to or an artist oh, right. uh, uh, who's, who sold art to be a good artist the person who is drawing every look at george bush when he started drawing every day you know he, that's the one that's the the more important thing you don't need to have these titles to be spiritual it's about like the person who draws every single day is going to be a great artist uh and the person who works on their own spirituality every day is going to be spiritually skilled you don't need to be right in a gallery to draw a picture that'll impress everybody. Right. Um, what would be the benefit of being spiritually skilled? If you didn't want to become a pastor, or you didn't want to. Um, well, for, I think just for um, value in your own life. Right. So being spiritually skilled, you, you brings you a lot of value in your day to day. And um, I also see. So sharpening the axe, I say, you sharp, you're you work on yourself first, and you can chop down trees because that's spiritual good or whatever. Who fill in the blank of what these trees are? There's another analogy that I use of, and when you fully work on yourself spiritually and you're spiritually skilled, I also think. So we say God is love. So in a way, being fully spiritually uh, skilled would be you have filled yourself up with love you are a loving person huh. fully loving and the, i've heard this analogy before where love is like a um is like pouring water into a cup okay. you're, you're the cup in this analogy you're okay. just a lot of inanimate <laughs> objects i feel like we're in harry potter yeah you're the cup and you're being filled 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 once you're overflowing you you then have the resources to be pouring into other people's cups gotcha so two different things obviously you being a full cup is amazing. And then if you are keep working on that, you're like, I have water to go around. Yeah. And you, it, once again, if, if you don't look at yourself first, it, it seems counterintuitive when it's like, isn't that selfish? But what the, the alternative is you have half of a cup of water right. and you pour it in someone else's cup and you're empty again. Right. So you want to work on yourself and become a, a, a tap almost for that and that would really take confidence which was one of those walk through thursday's words yeah. confidence in god that you know sometimes we're afraid to share because well that's all i have yeah and if i share with you then i'm not going to have it yes. anymore but to have the confidence to know that it's always going to be refilled yeah what, what podcast was that this was, it was about water um we were just using that water analogy of the I think it was actually last week's walk through Thursday oh, okay. or walk through Friday <laughs> where it was about a tree or, oh, right. or you know, oh, we're, we are a tree. Oh my gosh. Last week was the tree and this week we cut it down. <laughs> now we're cutting down the tree. We're a tree planted by water. And so no matter what drought or heat, we're mm -hmm. always getting water. Right. In. And same thing. Once you have that confidence that you have tapped into your spiritual skill and you have just a, that cup of love is just being filled up. Here, here's some. I know I'm going to keep getting filled up. Here's some, here's some. Instead of not working on yourself first, right. not making sure your cup's always filled to fill others. Yeah, it's true. I, this, now that I'm looking at it, 
it does seem a lot to have to do with confidence because do you ever in a, in a stressful situation and you're worried and you know you're going to make it but you're nervous and um whatever the whatever the, the situation is but there is a time where if you really truly believe that god will make everything okay yeah. you do feel relief peace yeah and so if the if the edge is unsharpened you need more strength yeah but if but if you know you have you can split a hair with that axe mm -hmm. you might breathe a little easier and and not be going so ham on the, <laughs> on the stump yeah no definitely and and yeah i think that pretty much sums it up yeah ecclesiastes 10 10 it's hard to spell it's hard to say and i thought axe was spelled with the knee but it's not it is axe but our word just says AX. I don't know. Let us know down in the comments. We didn't really know anything today. We didn't know about Cinderella. Didn't know about how to spell an X. It was Snow White. But what we do know is that it's the end of the show. And we will be back tomorrow for a fun Friday. Get ready for that. Go, Disney Friday. Go sharpen your axe. Sharpen it real good. Peace. <laughs>